I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well, stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Human Design Podcast. I am super excited to cover the next topic in the Human Design Podcast roadmap series that I'm doing, and that is centers. And of course, I'm going to say it again, this series was created for you to make human design super simple. Because let's be honest, so many people out there are not doing that. They're diving into all of the knowledge and they are teaching it like a dogma or they're overcomplicating it. And what I want to do is I want to strip away the things that we actually don't need to know um, and give you everything that you do in a really simple and integratable way. Because what's the point in having it all if we can't actually live in alignment with our design, right? So today we're going to be covering, I'm going to be covering centers. That's going to be all about definition. Um, and it's a super important topic. I'll get to that in a moment. Before we get to centers, I do actually want to have a little bit of a I don't know. I want to give a special shout out to anyone who is a line five or has a line five in their life and everyone who is also being confronted with, hmm, I'm going to use the word, I don't usually use it, toxic people. All right. Um, I had an experience last night where, and you, you guys hear me say this all the time, people never project their shit onto me anymore. However, I was in a situation where someone that I would never voluntarily choose, like it would be someone that I would be like, I'd be in their aura for 0.2 seconds. I'd be like, oh, not my peeps, I'm out. But I was in a situation where I spent had to spend some time with this person. And I'm going to be honest, like I ended up revisiting so much of my um, trauma from the patriarchy, from all of those misogynistic bosses I worked for in um in advertising. And I, they weren't all that way, don't get me wrong, but the ones that were were just awful, so much trauma. All of the trauma around being, I'm going to do inverted commas or quote quotations as you guys, some some of you guys call them, like relived all of that. I'm too sensitive. Um, I'm the one that did, like I'm, I should just pull myself together. I, I'm the one who did something wrong. Um, and all of that stuff really came up for me. And it was really fascinating because I did follow my own advice. I didn't take his projections personally. I just focused on what it brought up in me. And what it really, and the reason why I'm sharing this is because I'm not the only one in my life, the only line five in my life that's experiencing this right now. I've ha- heard so many stories of people that I love and line fives that I love that are just getting these epic projections of narcissism and uh, misogyny and all the awful things and really having to navigate that because yes, we do have this energy that can help um, heal. However, we also can be a little bit doormat for other people's crap. So here's what I want to say. If you have a line five in your in your life, please be conscious of what you are throwing in their direction and accusing them of. Um, Are you getting angry at them because of what's going on inside of you? Is that your wound that needs healing, not their problem? Like, ah, it really, it drives me crazy because people need to take responsibility for themselves. And it's not just, you know, it's not just a line five thing. It's everyone. We are all projecting our stuff onto the other. We see the world as we are, not as it is. And I just wish people would take more responsibility for the shit that they're spewing out onto other people because 
It's you, you know, it's not freaking me. I'm dealing with my shit. I'm having a good cry about it. I'm feeling all my feelings. I am revisiting all of my toxic bosses and awful situations with especially men because this was what got triggered for me specifically. Um, But we have to be taking more responsibility. I mean, I have compassion for this person, you know, and this is the other thing that I noticed is that for the first time in a long time, I instantly had compassion because clearly he didn't get loved the way he needed to be loved by his mother specifically because it was very you know, it was about me and me being a woman and me being a powerful woman that he just wanted to undermine everything that was me. And in the past, especially the last few years, I would be like, yeah, I'm going to send him love and compassion. And um, clearly he's got his own stuff and he absolutely has his own stuff because I know he has his own stuff. Um, However, what I did last night that I haven't done for a number of years is let myself be upset about it. Let myself be angry about it. Let myself be like spit about it um, and then cry about it and then let myself off the hook for all of the inner child stuff that that showed its its face and needed to be acknowledged that, no, I'm not oversensitive. It was his shit. Um, no, it wasn't anything I did or said. It was his projection of his wound onto me. Um, and really actually let myself go through that process. And I feel that, and I do want to, again, reiterate, this isn't just a line five thing. It's that it's just that us line fives, it just happens in a much bigger way for us. Like we can just get a side swipe from nowhere. Um, in this, this circumstance, this particular person, um, I had been so accommodating and so lovely and something had happened. And I was that, that basically fell into his court. I don't like to blame, but it was his fault. It was his, not his fault. A better word is responsibility. Um, However, he didn't look me in the eye. He didn't say sorry to me. He only said sorry to Justin. Um, It was, I was going out of my way to say, oh, don't worry about it. Things happen. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, And then I just get this like attacked, like attacked across the table This is the thing I want you to understand is that whatever you are putting out, is it yours? Are you projecting your stuff onto other people? Do you need to take responsibility for who you're being in this moment? Um, And for those of us that I think is going to be more, this audience is those that are receiving it, those that are experiencing it, that are experiencing whatever the discrimination is, whatever the anger is, whatever the attack is. Um, whether it's race, whether it's gender, whether it's religious, whether it's whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Like whatever you're receiving, it's so important that you allow yourself to feel the feelings, whatever those feelings are. While ultimately, well, at the same time, understanding that whatever's being projected onto you isn't actually about you. What is important for you to focus on is what came up in you. That's what needs healing. That's what, what is, um, effectively potentially calling in that person to help you heal um, so that you can evolve and move forward and all those things. So rant pretty much over, but please can people be more compassionate with the line fives in their life, please? Because yes, we are here to lead. Yes, we are here to heal. Yes, we can be superheroes. Yes, we're great listeners. Yes, we can solve your problems. And we're human too. So don't just dump all your shit at our door expect us to deal with it and treat us like we should just get the fuck over it and move on because no, no, we've got our own stuff too. Yeah. Um, Okay. Rant over. Um, Let us get into today's episode. Bit of a, bit of a gear change. I want to talk today about definition, about the centers. Okay. Now the thing about the centers, I was so in hindsight, I say lucky, but we make our own luck, I believe. The, my path took me to a person that when I first, the first thing that I learned about human design, the first way I studied human design was in a way that I learned everything else and then type last because type actually wasn't part of the initial download. So it's a thing that was created by Ra and Jovian to help teach human design, but it's not actually part of the download. It wasn't part of what the voice actually gave to Ra. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because definition 
is what creates type. But definition itself can be so different that often people will say, and I just had someone DM me recently um, on Insta. She was like, I just don't resonate with the generator stuff. I actually resonate more with the reflect stuff. And sure enough, she only had her sacral defined to, um, I can't remember what it, what, what it was to, but she had two centers defined um, and through an unconscious connection. So that's what that, that term that I've coined, it's not a thing. It's not a human design thing. No other teacher is going to teach it. Um, what I call a demi reflector, because these are people that really resonate because they have an unconscious connection. They really resonate a lot with, with being, um, you know, like a, having a lot of openness, whether that's a reflector or a lot of the knowledge around projectors. They have those so, that same magic. And because of the unconscious connection, they can be more aware of the openness in their chart than they can in their defined definition in their chart. All right. So what I want you to understand is that your definition is going to be the thing that you resonate with the most. And in some cases, it's going to be you resonate more with you. You'll, you'll feel more truth through understanding what I'm going to teach you today than you will through all the people all the memes that people spin out about type. Okay, so what is definition? If you're looking at your chart, you're going to have some white centers um, and the centers of the chakras. In human design, we actually have um, nine centers um, instead of the, the seven in the Hindu system. That's because in, I think it was 1786 or something like that, we split out um, the spleen I'm sorry, the heart center split into the um, the heart center, so the G center and the will center. And then the spleen came in as one of the chakras as well. So that's why in human design, we're a nine-centered being. Now, you're going to have some colored in centers and some white centers, okay? So if you have a white center that is undefined, if you have a colored in center that is defined, where you are white, this is where you are taking in, amplifying and reflecting back other people's energy, all right? Where you are defined, colored in, this is where you are almost projecting out your energy. It's consistent, it's reliable, it's always on. You can always rely on it. So often I say one of the things that we really discovered through doing the panels in HDX was that definition, colored in, is where you build trust in yourself, like just trust that, the voice that your voice is there or trust um, your gut response or trust your intuition or trust your thinking. It's, it's like you can trust that consistent and reliable energy that's always there for you. Um, and if you're ha where you have a white center or an undefined center, this is a place where you build trust in the universe because that energy is going to look different, feel different, show up differently, depending on who you're around or what's happening in the sky, okay, as in the transits. So that's where we start, all right? Now, we can also have an open center. An open center has absolutely no gates activated, okay? So let's say if you have the G center, I've got a wide open G center. It just means it's completely white. None of the, the gates are colored in with what we call a hanging gate on it. Okay. Um, when it's wide open, then this is going to be a place that you really, it's going to shift and change. It's going to be so, so different. Um, at least the potential of how you experience that en energy is vast. Okay. Now it doesn't mean you have something or don't have something. One of the examples I love to share is Jess Babako that many of you will know because she's been on this podcast a lot. She's a, she's a key member of our um, HDX community as well. Um, she's hugely intuitive. She teaches intuition or she used to teach a lot of intuition. Um, she's actually my intuitive coach. She's got a wide open spleen. So old school knowledge will say, if you've got a wide open spleen, then you don't necessarily have those intuitive gifts. Not true at all. Um, it means that you have all the intuitive gifts. It's just, they're going to change depending on who you're around. Okay. Um, or what transits are activated. Now, if you have a white center with a hanging gate, so you have a colored in um, number and then a little line that hangs off it, that's also going to be somewhere that's going to feel more consistent to you. So when it's switched on, that's going to be an energy or a theme that you express consistently all the time. Um, the growth in that is where you go from the shadow um, 
to the gift to the city, to the higher expressions, okay? Now, with our defined centers, I like to think of it, this is where we are influencing, influencing the other and our undefined centers is where we're being influenced. Um, a lot of people talk about the, you know, being an undefined center is like it needs protecting and this is the only place we can we can get conditioned all of that's not true um we it's more susceptible to conditioning than all the other centers okay then sorry then defined centers um because it's wide open because there's nothing consistent for it to come home to so what you'll find in undefined centers is you'll often have a lot of your heavier conditioning in there um, let me give you an example. If you have an undefined will center, um, also known as the heart center and the ego center, then what's going to happen, um, potentially going to happen, and happens a lot in my experience, is that you will pick up the self-worth of your parent. And you'll actually, part of your identity will be their self-worth, um, not yours. Like you will just literally be imprinted. Whereas for me, um, someone who has a defined will center I may have seen things about my mother's um, self-worth and I'm more inclined to go, I'm not going to be like that because I have my own energy that's there with me all the time, whether I'm with her or with not with her. Um, and that energy, I, I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to follow that because it's an innate energy within me. Um, whereas with an undefined center, what can happen is that the consistency comes from our parents' aura, okay? So we get more easily imprinted. Um, now, a lot of people will also talk about your undefined centers. You need to protect that energy. I do believe in protecting energy. Like I sage like a mofo. Um, I never used to, but I do. I use sprays. I set intentions. My space is so clear. I don't expose my, like I do not watch movies. I don't listen to books. I don't read books. I don't um, watch YouTube. Anything that is what I would call lower consciousness that my um, authority says don't listen to and sometimes even because just loves um like he loves a a scary story about something i can't remember what he was going he was going down the road oh with, about ai the other day um and i sort of listened to a point where i was like i'm like okay i'm, I'm being educated right now but from that point onward i'm like it's a no i don't want that in my head i don't want that in my consciousness it's all good let's just leave it so what I do believe when it comes to our energy is that we need to have really strong boundaries of what we bring into our awareness because our focus is the most powerful thing that we have. What we focus on grows the end. Um, so if we sit around watching violent movies and we sit around um, listening to people that are all about the drama and the gossip and um, how the world is all going to hell, then that goes in and we are going to be creating. We're going to be creating more of that. So it's the same with your energy centers. You want to have really good boundaries around where you choose to put yourself and not put yourself. So if you work in a toxic environment and you have a lot of undefined centers, then you want to honestly ask yourself like, okay, well, how can I, um, what are the strategies I can put in place so I'm not in this toxic environment as much? Where do I need to create boundaries? And the boundaries can be little things like, um, if you work in an, you, if you have your own office, like shut your freaking door, like shut your door, put on some incense or some sage or something that's going to cleanse that space for you, set an intention, put a golden bubble around yourself. Great. You can do those things and they do make a difference. And there is now so much research coming in that, that these things do make a difference. Um, the other thing is like, who are you, you know, what are you putting up with? What are you putting up within your space? The people that you're hanging out with, the topics that you're talking about, because let's be honest, we're humans. We love to connect over drama. So are you spending lots of time gossiping, drama? Do you talk behind people's backs? Do you any, do you engage in the, the you know those lower frequency behaviors? Because this is another thing that's going to directly affect your energy centers. Um, and it's going to also affect your defined centers because you'll be expressing through the through the shadow, not through the higher states. Um, so you want to get, this is where I believe the most important protection is put in place is, are you creating, are you existing in an environment of people, places, topics, focus that is actually who you want to become? Or are you still in like, putting up with old patterns and behaviors because it's easier to do what you've always done than take a risk and do something new. 
that's a little bit of a, I appreciate I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent, but I think this is really, really important. Um, so each and every center can have, um, in human design, we call it not self. Um, and I think there's a misconception that in your undefined centers, you don't do, you're not self. Yes, you are. Sorry, in your defined centers. Yes, you absolutely do. Um, I've got a great podcast episode that I actually do myself a few times a year. Um, it's number 95 and it's basically going through every single center and um, becoming super aware of the not self uh, and fear and the other choices that you could be making. So go and check out that podcast. Um, what else do you need to know about the centers? The centers also, the def, the, how we are defined, colored in center, dictates our type. Okay. So let me give you, I'm going to give you that really quickly. So in um, the chart, we have four motors. The motors are the root center, the sacral, the heart, also known as the will center and the ego center, and the solar plexus. These are the four centers that are generating energy. The sacral does it consistently and reliably all the time. It's always on. It's always, uh uh uh-huh. The root center is a pulse of energy. Go now, wait, go now, wait. Um, And that, yeah, don't need to go any further than that. Um, The solar plexus is, of course, the emotional wave. So it's also that inconsistency. The will center is, is about having the willpower, having the ability to, to go the extra mile, to do the extra thing, to have the determination, but it's like a bank. So you have to save up that energy, use it, and then replenish that energy. So the the will center, the solar plexus and the root, they are motors, but their energy is what we call inconsistent. I know this sounds confusing because a defined center is a consistent energy that's always there. Um, But just to know that with those three motors, they have a certain way that the energy is generated. So with a root, look for the pulse. Um, It's always there. The themes are always there. It's always switched on if it's defined for you. But just know that sometimes it'll be go time and sometimes it'll be wait time. Um, The solar plexus, it's the emotional wave. um, And the will center is this willpower that you need to fill up. Next thing to understand is that how our type is dis- is um, determined is going, going to be what centers we have colored in and connected to other centers or not connected to other centers as the case may be. So if you're a manifester, it means you have a motor connected to the throat. So one of the four centers I just talked about, and it makes a channel to a defined throat, Okay an unbroken line to the throat. That's what the manifesto is Um, and no sacral definition. Then we have the generator. The generator has sacral definition, okay? So anyone who has sacral definition, um, they are a type of generator. Then we have the hybrid, the manifesting generator. And that means that they have the motor to the throat, same as the the manifesto. So it could be the sacral, um, it could be, well, a manifesting generator is always going to have a defined sacral, um, but it could be one of the other, like the sacral might be connected to the root center, let's say, um, and then the solar plexus, solar plexus is connected to the throat. Um, so that's a manifesting generator as well. Um, and the sacral isn't necessarily connected. Then we have the projector and the projector can have any center defined except for the sacral and can't have a connection from a motor to the throat. Okay, so no motor, no motor to the throat, no energy to the throat. Um, So this is also part of that recognition piece. So they can have a defined throat, um, which does help with recognition, uh, but it's because it doesn't have a motor to the throat that can can have is why we talk about this recognition piece. And then a reflector has no centers defined. Okay, so it's actually your definition that dictates your type. The next thing to understand is that um, you can be, and I'm actually working with an incredible quad split, nearly completely defined projector in my as a one-on-one client at the moment. She's fucking amazing. And um, she has every center defined uh, except for the sacral. So she is a projector, 100% a projector, just as much as let's say 
uh, Jenny Crowther is a projector and she has the spleen to the throat. And what's important about that is Jenny's got all of this openness and you've heard her talk about how she's so, so impacted by other people's energy where this incredible, amazing client of mine, she's not as influenced by other people's energy at all. But when it comes to her being able to read other people's cycle energy, she's amazing. So there's that, that similarity, but she's going to operate so differently than Jenny does. So understanding what our definition and, and our centers, and each center has a theme. Again, if you go back to the episode 95, it goes through each center, each question, each not self, go do it. Um, so the last thing to understand is that we get our def- definition from a channel. Okay, so the gates are all the numbers that are lined up. And then when two gates connect, that's a channel. Okay, from one center to the next. That's how they get lit up because there is a channel running from one center to the next center. Now, um, this means in our individual human design chart, um, we that energy is flowing back and forward. Okay, it's a little bit different when we're when we start to work in a slightly bigger group, but that energy is always on and always moving forward. So any of your channel energy is going to be a very prominent energy that you feel a lot uh, because it's on all the time and it's bringing energy to the centers that you have defined. If you have lots of channels, then that's also going to be, they're going to be really significant themes to look for. Um, How do we cleanse out or how do we get the most out of our definition well first and foremost you want to start to understand um, the shadow expression of each of the centers episode 95 Um, and then you want to start to clear out any conditioning that you've got in there Uh, that then uh, this is the piece that I wanted to get to the big thing with your undefined centers this is the place I remember reading what many many years ago like this is the place for the greatest potential of compassion And the reason why that is, is because in our undefined centers, we are feeling the other, we're amplifying it and reflecting it back. So when we do the work on ourselves and we move away from fear or the not self or the ego, that means that we can feel how other people are feeling, not make it our part of our identity. It's not us. We don't have to change it or fix it or anything like that. Um, But we have that ability to say, wow, that feels really uncomfortable, Um, you know, you must be going through some challenging things and really be able to tap into our compassion. So your undefined centers are super powerful and don't let anyone else tell you that they're not because tell you that they're not because they really, really are. Um, they're not a place you need to defend and protect. They're a place that you need to learn not to identify with other people's energy. So let me give you an example of what that might be. As say, as a child, You've got an undefined solar plexus, but your parents or one of your parents have a defined solar plexus. They're very emotional. They're not taking responsibility for their emotions. Then you become the peacekeeper. You try to control everyone else's emotions so you don't have to feel that. Um, that is what I mean, that that you as a child were identifying with that energy. Like I don't want to feel that way. Or um, when this person does X, then I feel Y. So you change your behavior to try and avoid that emotion however as we do our experiment and and especially if you're raising kids that are undefined emotionally or undefined anywhere you know you want to introduce this idea that it's actually maybe not even your energy um it's maybe you've walked into aura or walked into the room with someone else and they're feeling really emotional so it's practicing going identifying noticing is a much better word noticing that all of a sudden you're feeling this energy um, and then choosing to say, wow, I feel compassion for that person or that's a bit crappy or not doing what the mind would ask you to do. And that is to identify with it and fix it. So I feel sad. So I need to work out why I'm sad and fix that. Where really you just sat down next to someone who's feeling sad there's nothing to be done for you. You just need to be like, oh, wow, that's, I feel for that person. Because the moment that you start to start to notice the way other people's energy feels, you don't identify with it. You actually let it continue to flow through you. And then it's not a problem. Then you can just let it go. 
It's when we hold on to it and we make it part of our identity or our problem to fix, that's when it's unresourceful. That's when it's getting in our way and creating um, conditioning and not self and all of those behaviors. I trust that makes sense. I'm going to give you a really quick example. So um, I've got an undefined spleen. So I really feel people's pain and people's fear. As a kid, I could never go into a hospital. It felt so uncomfortable for me because of the fear and the pain. Um, But at the time, I thought it was me. I thought I had a phobia about the the hospital. I thought I was afraid of hospitals. I thought I was afraid of um, illness. But actually, it was because I was feeling everyone else's that I felt so incredibly uncomfortable in that environment. Um, So now if I'm in that situation, I am like, wow, it feels really like scared in here or people feel there's a lot of pain in here. Um, So I can notice it and I can read it, but I'm not making it mine. I'm not identifying with it. So my mind doesn't even think to hold on to it. It's just like, wow, yeah, let's, let's get out of here or, you know, let's do whatever we need to do. Um, So this is the big, in my experience, both personally and now working with thousands of clients, it's the biggest game changer is when you understand that in your undefined centers, that there is nothing to be done except notice that energy and know that it's not yours. It's a, the way that you can really decondition, you can let go of other people's stuff and you can never pick it up in the first place, which is even more powerful. Now, with your defined centers, this is how you're expressing out into the world. So this is how people are going to see you. And if you do have an unconscious connection, um, which is going to be read in a lot of charts, um, it's the left-hand side of the chart. Um, In our chart, I think it's the lighter one, but just look at the left-hand side of the chart. Um, Then sometimes we don't have conscious awareness of our defined centers if we just have the two and a conscious connection to them. Um, or we have a conscious connection between them. So then in that case, it's just practicing that energy, like asking yourself, you know, reflecting back what, you know, when, when in my past have I experienced this energy? What did it look for me, like for me? What did it feel like for me? What did it sound like for me? Um, and really becoming consciously aware of it because then you can just trust that it's there. It's only your mind that's like, I need to know exactly how that works and what it is. It's you, once you trust in your body, your body's going to trust that innate wisdom that's already in lies within you. Before we finish, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the centers really quickly, but for more information, go back to 95, um, episode 95. So let's start at the head. The head and the root center are what we call pressure centers. The the pressure from the head center is coming from source, pushing energy down through the chart, down through your your energy grid, if you like. Um, And then the uh, root center is a pressure center as well. This is Gaia energy being pushed up through your design or through your aura or through your energy center, whatever you want to call it. Um, The head center is all about question. Um, The Ajna, which is the next one down, these are all about answers. These two are all about mental energy, okay? Ideas, inspiration, thinking, initiation. You know, it's like that the beginning process. It's all about thinking and patterns, conditioning, conditioning. it's very, the, the Ajna, if you have a defined Ajna, then you're a structured thinker. You probably identify with being quite cerebral. You can see three steps ahead. You will generally be thinking steps ahead of other people. Um, so you might think in structures, um, in order. Um, and if you don't, then it's pretty messy up there. Let me be clear. I've got an undefined head in Ajna. It can be really messy. I need to get my, um, my thinking almost like out on paper and then I have much greater clarity. The throat center is the next one down. It's actually the, if, if you like, it's the destination of all the centers because all of our energy is moving around our body, around our design to enter, to exit the throat, okay? Because the throat is all about manifestation. It's all about bringing it back into reality. If you have an undefined throat, that does not mean you cannot manifest, okay? So don't freaking listen to the people that say that. Not true. Everyone on the planet can manifest. Um What human design is going to help you do is be more in alignment with who you are and your gifts and your magic. And that's going to make it easier for you to manifest. Okay. It's not about whether you have to to find something or not. Um, Then the next one down, we have the G center. The G center is all about direction and self-love. And this is a, this love is higher, like it's unconditional love. 
It's the highest states of love, but it's also like loving the self, loving the body. It's, it's all the facets of love and direction. Um, the next one down is the will center, which is the little triangle, which is off to the right-hand side. This is a very, um, we also call it the ego. So it's, an, it's a center that is very much about the material plane and creating on the material plane. Um, there's a lot of tribal energy that moves through here as well. So it's very like providing for the tribe. These are people, if you've got a defined will center, they like stuff. They like material things. Um, and that's okay. They will also tend to, um, they can be focused on themselves and what they're creating in the on the material plane, which is the 3D plane, which is our reality. Okay, it's what we look at every day. That is the material plane. Um, then the next one down is, where am I going to go? Let's go down to the solar plexus. So if we follow down to the, the right-hand arrow, um, this is our emotions this is the emotional wave. This is what's going through a transformation at the moment because at the moment, um, humans are super emotional. We are super, super emotional in what we are starting to understand in an unresourceful way. What does that mean? It means that a lot of people are indulging or oppressing their emotions and emotions are stopping us from fully knowing our highest expression because we stay in the drama, we stay in the fear, we stay in the lower emotions um, and the lower we are in the, our emotions on the consciousness scale, the more dense we are from a quantum physics point of view, the more dense we are, the less light can get in, the less light, which is less connection to source. So we actually are going through this change. The solar plexus is, what do they call it? The solar plexus mutation. Um, we are moving towards a world where um, we actually will not be as emotional. We won't be as emotional. We'll just operate from the higher realms or sorry, the higher, well, yes, the higher realms too, higher emotions um, because we won't be indulging in so much of these, these, this dense stuff that we've been doing. And it's a really important part of the evolution of the human race is to get out of the density of emotion and into the higher expressions of emotion, which kind of, I don't know if this is the right use of ironically, um, no, it's not paradoxically, the higher we go with our emotions, the less emotion we're going to express, the more we're going to feel connected and lifted up and at one and love and joy and peace and those things, but the less actual emotions we'll be expressing, like the less drama and, um, fear and, but they're not coming to my head right now. So, you know, those lower, lower emotions, um, then let's talk about the sacral. So it's the square in the middle. This is all about the work that we're doing and sexual energy, life force energy, desires, passion. Um, this is this incredible motor that is here to create what lights this person up. Um, often if you've got a defined sacral, there is this almost, um, hmm, what's the word? Um, there can be a balance or imbalance between work and sex, basically, because that can be this, the defined cycle can be more about um, following like a sexual, um, sexually what lights you up, or it can be about work that lights you up. Sometimes that can be imbalanced. Okay. So what we want to um, be aware of is that, that we can balance both. Um, but sometimes, sometimes that will that will seem or be a little bit out of balance, okay? But mm, depending on what's going on, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not a good thing. Um, is it resourceful? That's the ultimate question, right? So is it moving you forward? Is it sustainable? Is it all of these things? Um, otherwise, if it's unresourceful, it means that it's keeping you stuck and keeping you stuck in fear and um, it's completely unsustainable and all of those things. Um, the next one, let's go down to the bottom. The square at the bottom is the root center. This is all about progress. This is all about getting shit done. It's also this place where we ground into Mother Earth. As I said, it's also a pressure center. If you have a defined, if you have either of the pressure centers, so defined root or defined head, be super aware that don't pressure other people to get shit done. So don't, don't hurry people up. Don't pressure people to have answers um, because they don't have that same energy within them that's driving them like you do. Okay, that same pressure that's driving you to those outcomes. Um, it's also a very capable. So if you're a projector, 
who has a defined root center, you will tend to feel like you have energy to get things done. All right. Because the, the, it can be a very, um, very productive center as well, but it's all about progress, moving things along, but with that pulse of energy. Then let's go around to the spleen, lucky last, which is the triangle on the left-hand side. Um, and that is the all about survival, intuition, well-being, um, and literally moving the human race forward, okay? So it's very much about moving us all forward. Um, it also is going to be the place that we we can experience a lot of fear. There's a fear in each gate um, that's inherent, depending on what gates you've got activated. They've all got one of the fear of their own. Um However, it is also the part of us that will move us closer to, um, you know, a survival, but to thriving. Okay. So it is actually the center that is going to intuitively guide us to be healthier, be happier. Um, it's also the center that's about physical, but the physicality of the body, like being healthy and well as well. So there are the centers. That's what definition means. Um, I've talked about how they're connected, how it influences our um, type, how it determines, I should say, our type. And then to go deeper, I really think the centers are one of the most important things you can study, okay, your centers. Um, episode 95, go back and do that exercise. Thanks, everyone. It's been a longer one today. I trust you got what you needed. And, um, yeah, so I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.